Blizzard at GamesCon yesterday, 30th anniversary Warcraft talk about events and stuff like that, Warcraft Direct, Overwatch collabs, so let's talk a little bit about some of the stuff that was announced yesterday, some good things. So, um, Blizzard actually hasn't been to GamesCon since 2019, I didn't realize that. But here they are again at 2024, kind of representing Microsoft in a way as their new entity, but here they are talking about a new 30th anniversary Warcraft event, which uh, I was unaware of that was going to happen. I knew about the 20th anniversary stuff that we're probably going to get in November, but now we're going to get an October 30th anniversary event. And uh, the new president of Blizzard talked about it, and she said these events will allow players to earn unique in-game rewards while creatively celebrating the history of Azeroth. In the coming months, Blizzard will also share more information about Warcraft Direct, which appears to be a replacement for BlizzCon. So as you know, Blizzard announced that uh, there will be no BlizzCon in 2024, but I guess Warcraft Direct is going to be their new uh, way to kind of replace that. So Warcraft Direct is supposed to be like this online uh, reveal of things to come. They're probably going to talk about the big patch that will be coming at that time and uh, some more in-game uh, Warcraft event goodies. Who knows what it'll be. But yeah, 30 long years. I can't believe that, man. So 30 years of the Warcraft franchise, 20 years of World of Warcraft. What a year this is going to be. An exciting year. Uh, finally, Blizzard also revealed a really cool collab between Overwatch 2 and uh, World of Warcraft. We recently saw not too long ago the whole uh, big drop about uh, Arthas Menethil showing up in that random Overwatch reveal for their new character. And we got excited about it. We're like, what does this mean? It's probably an Overwatch Warcraft collab. Well, here it is. So there are a bunch of things that are going to drop for this collab. But the first thing they're showing us is this new... <sighs> Mommy Sylvanas skin. I mean, this is the Sylvanas we used to. This is the pre-Jailer, pre, you know, horrible character arc. This is the Mommy Sylvanas. Yeah, this was the Mommy Sylvanas that we all remember, know, and love. And she's on a Widowmaker skin. There will be tons of anime and all kinds of internet junk created about this uh, skin, I'm very sure of. Stuff that I won't be able to show on this stream, but stuff that uh, will be very exciting and appealing to the eyes of many. So uh, there it is, the first Sylvanas skin that's been dropping. And there's going to be more. Yeah, she did nothing wrong. <laughs> there's going to be more um, skins coming out for World of Warcraft-related stuff, so that's pretty cool. Um, moving on to Thursday, I guess, will be a big reveal as well for World of Warcraft-related content. It looks like they're going to be dropping some uh, War Within-related uh, announcements as well. So if we look at this tweet out here, this basically goes into some of the events that are coming up in BlizzCon. And if you see right here on Thursday, August 22nd, World of Warcraft, The War Within. We'll be dropping uh, some announcements related to the expansion. We know that early access is beginning that same day, 6 o'clock my time, whatever time it's going to be for you. Um, so uh, exciting stuff on that Thursday. Uh, some other cool things happening around the worlds of Warcraft. Steel Series is dropping a very cool uh, series of uh, peripherals related to World of Warcraft. And with those peripherals, you can get some in-game goodies. So this is pretty cool. Uh, the collection cannot be purchased yet, but you can sign up for uh, notifications here at Steel Series' website if you go there. And as of most of these in-game goodie rewards have no other source the, other than this promotion, it is unclear if they'll be obtainable through other means uh, once Steel Series' limited collection is no longer available. So here's the collection. Let's check out real quick this, uh, this little video that Steel Series dropped. This music's pretty epic. Classic WoW music. Ooh. Steel Series actually makes good stuff. Oh my god. Damn! Oh shit! Oh, they got the, the uh, buttons on this. <laughs> what sword? Now it's a key. Damn, this is pretty nice. Next giveaway, maybe. For the glory. Oh, shit. Hey, maybe, maybe, maybe you guys uh, pull through on this giveaway. Yeah, that, that could be a new giveaway. So this is really, really cool. Uh, some nice stuff from this Steel Series series, I should say. So along with those items that we just saw, here are some of them. The World of Warcraft headphones. I really like the gold and black that they put on some of this stuff. This is really, really nice, actually. With the uh, old Warcraft logo, the W there. This is pretty cool. Um, this, damn. So I currently use, this is like your classic MMO mouse with the buttons on the side. I currently use this cheap-ass Amazon version, um, 
It actually gets the job done. I don't know what this is. Red Dragon. I used to have the Razor Naga, but that shit broke. And then I went cheap and bought this Red Dragon mount. But this freaking looks amazing. Oh my god, wait, are, are those runes on the scroll wheel? You guys see that? Holy crap. This is a Titan-bound mouse, I guess. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Razor Naga is kind of a play on what this is. This is really, really cool, actually. Uh, the, it looks like RGB around the sides and the WoW logo here. Not bad. Not bad at all. Um, oh, a Booster Pack Alliance and Horde. Oh, looks like the Booster Pack Alliance and Horde comes with the Savage Evan. Okay. So there's an Alliance version. Oh, for the Alliance there, embroidered under the, the band. That's pretty cool. And then a Horde one. Oh, so it looks like the caps where the Warcraft logo are come off, and you can add the cap for the Horde of the Alliance as well, and the band. Okay, so this is a switchable thing. So this is that same headset, but you can switch it out for these either of these two uh, options. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the Red Dragon mouse ain't doing bad for me either. And then this, the keycap. Okay, the keycap for 80 bucks. You can never forget which sword we were talking about. Look at that all broken, War Within-esque, the WoW logo right there. This is a pretty nice detailed out uh, keycap here. So replace your escape key with a nice little sword of Sargeras in your keyboard. And then we got a, uh, a mat here as well. Okay, yeah, not bad. This is a pretty cool set. So what do you get in-game? It looks like uh, you can get the Grin Reaver mount, which is an old shop mount from back in Wad in 2019. Lil Flamo, which is a nice little pit lord pet. And then uh, this one's new, the Savage Ebony Battle Turtle. So we've seen Battle Turtles before, both the green and the blue version. We saw one on a trading post not too long ago. Uh, this is a black version, which we have not seen before. So this is an interesting one. Limited time, limited edition. I don't know. People riding the black one, you'll know they have the Steel Series series. Uh, that's pretty cool. And here's, here's the price breakdown of how you can get each of these. So each of these are attached to specific items. So if you watch the uh, the Battle Turtle, you're going to have to either get the Booster Pack for the Alliance or Horde, the Artesian Keycap, or the Mouse Pad. Lil Flamo comes with the Arrow X and uh, the uh, Ar Arcus Nova, which is uh, the headphones. That's how you can get the uh, mount. So uh, these are pretty cool. Nice promotion from Steel Series. Uh, maybe we'll see more stuff like this as the anniversary events continue to tick on. Uh, moving on to some in-game related stuff. Season 1 Mythic Plus Dungeon Tuning. Um, I'm not going to go through all this tuning. There's a lot of, you know, balancing and rebalancing. But one thing across the board that you will notice for almost all of these dungeons is Blizzard has increased the amount of enemy forces required. For almost all of these dungeons, enemy force required to increase, enemy force required to increase. Hey, there's a, it, so they want us to kill more enemies. Now, they did lower the health of some of these guys, um, but it looks like they just want us to slaughter more guys on our way to the final clear. So there you go. They want, they want more mobs being mowed down by more people. And that's uh, the gist of the changes for Season 1. The, there'll be more as we get closer to the season, of course. Uh, Blizzard updated the authority of the Storm's Enchant. If you currently have this weapon enchant, it'll now activate in a different way. So uh, before it used to grant you a buff, which um, you had to trigger multiple times. Now, once the enchant activates, it'll automatically just, you know, uh, uh, hit, right? So the enchant consists of the option. The damage will occur immediately when the enchant activates rather than granting you this window where you had to kind of trigger multiple times. So... That's nice if you're using that enchant. I personally am not. I'm a death knight. I enchant my own shit. Um, invisibility potion update. So Blizzard not too long ago said that this invisibility potion for the War Within will not share cooldowns with uh, combat potions. They've kind of redacted that now. Not kind of. They did. So Blizzard updated, uh, confirmed that the interaction was un unintentional and has been hotfixed. So now the drought of silent footfalls. Uh, invisibility potion once again shares cooldown with combat potions. So relevant to those of you out there who do pvp and enjoy to uh, invisibly kill your enemies <clears throat> more money more problems yeah never has there been a less true statement um moving on big interview with chris metzen on the world soul saga and i was actually wondering we watched the interview not too long ago with uh, some of the other devs and i was like damn where's chrissy boy is Chris Metzen going to come out and talk about this thing? We got the War Within expansion dropping. We haven't really heard from him since BlizzCon. Well, here it is. Chris Metzen on a one-on-one -on -one interview talking about the War Within and everything else that's coming in the coming months. Let's uh, let's watch this thing. Break it down. I didn't think Zerglings, you know, morphing into orcs would work, but... No. I didn't either. It's been, a, it's been a privilege working on Zerg orcs. Hi, I'm Scott Johnson, the host of the World of Warcraft podcast, The Instance, and today I'm sitting here with Chris Metzen. Chris? There he is. Scott, it's good to see you, man. Good to see you. 
How you feeling? Uh, Our wow savior. Good. You know, it's a crazy time. We're about to launch the War Within and, you know, really kick off this massive World Soul Saga, um, which is a trip because, you know, I haven't shipped a video game in, you know, eight or nine years. So uh, it's kind of wild going through this process again and just kind of feeling that anticipation, you know, excited to see what people think. And when the product finally gets into people's hands, it's... Yeah. It's it's, uh, it's one of my favorite parts of the whole development process. Well, let me ask you this question, because uh, you reminded me of how long this has been going. I remember firing up the World of Warcraft uh, OG vanilla World of Warcraft and seeing a trailer that said, celebrating 10 years of Warcraft. And I remember yeah. then thinking, you Crazy. gotta be kidding me, that's insane. That's how long I've been playing these games. And now we're 20 years on top of that, yeah. 30 years total. That has to be a little overwhelming, especially given that you were here for most of that, had a bit of a break. I mean, now guys, you... honestly, say what you want about the franchise as a whole and where World of Warcraft currently stands. It's impressive that this game has gone on for this long and held held on to a player base. Mind you, a player base that pays $15 a month. We're in a world where free-to-play has become the standard. Uh, that's a pretty, pretty crazy achievement. You're back. Does that weigh on you? Do you feel the, the, the heat from the time? Like, where, How do you feel about how that how that entire process has gone. I, I don't feel kind of heat or like the, the weight of time, you know, um, relative to expectation. It's really weird, you know, being a little, little older, a little wiser, feels like 100 years ago, feels like five minutes ago, all at the same time. True. So when I look at this World Soul Saga, the stuff we're building right now, thankfully there's an immediacy um, of it all to me. It's just, we live and die by, you know, how good, you know, the things we're sculpting in real time is. Trying to hold it all in your head, the weight of the past, you know, the, it's kind of beyond me. I can't really, really wrap my head around like all the history all at once. I mean, Talk, He talks about the weight of the past. And I, mean, I feel like I'm listening to Thrall talk, honestly. Whatever he's talking, I feel like this is, he's literally, Thrall is literally a trope for Metzen. He is, he is feeling the weight of the past. He's coming back. He went away for a while. He's got a gray beard. I mean, Jesus. They even balled it at the same time back in, uh, what was it? Uh, Wad. It was, yeah. They've definitely uh, been connected at the dig for a long time. Kids graduating college right now named Jaina and Anduin. It's like, yeah. what? <laughs> I often find it's not all that helpful to overdwell on, you know, in, in the course of development. Wait, did he say his kids are named Jaina and Anduin? Hold on. Did he say his kids are named Jaina and Anduin? Was he joking or... Or is that freaking real? It focused on what you're doing at the time. I have to look um, that up. So that's how I try and balance it out. Um, one day, I'm sure I'll look back and go, <laughs> Not wow. his kids. Okay. Working on the... Yeah, yeah, okay. There are kids graduate. Okay, yeah. That's what I... Yeah, yeah, okay. This game Makes again sense. has really given me more of a, like an immediate <laughs> sense of gratification that just kind of keeps you focused in the moment. And that's I'm gonna name my son Logarsh. You know, where my head is at on a day-to-day -day basis. When you, you mentioned people naming their kids after characters that you oh, created, okay. that you named, and that you developed and, and saw grow and evolve and everything. Something that's interesting about War Within so far, to me, is we're seeing the gang kind of back together in a, in a much more uh, complete way. So you're seeing Anduin talking to Thrall with Jaina nearby right. and Cadgar, my favorite Worst wizard of all time, but I love him. He's there. They're all there. They're scared and he's going to die, man. What that tells me is that we're in for some coming together of a lot of strings, a lot of, a lot of stuff that has been out there for 20 years that will finally converge in some meaningful ways. Do you want to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, I'll before he says anything, he's, uh, he's totally hinting. This is the Avengers Endgame of World of Warcraft. This is the coming of every hero that we've come across throughout the entire series coming together to defeat the looming, you know, uh, Void Lords have been around since the very beginning. The big threat, the ominous threat sitting out there, and now it's coming. Avengers! Avengers! How fitting. The double. Assemble. 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 No! Yeah, yeah, this is, their, uh, this is their moment, no doubt. Break it down. When I came back, you know, I'm like, all right. Let's go, World of Warcraft. Like, what do we got? What are we making? And they were in, you know, they had already been doing um, War Within, or what would become, you know, War Within, um, for, for about 10 months. While I, I liked what they were building and thought it was a cool next chapter in WoW, in my head, I'm like, for the 20th anniversary of WoW, like, I want to have a feeling, like, whatever the product becomes, I want to have a feeling of 
pulling all the toys out of the toy box, right? They like older characters, you know, the kind of macro themes that, you know, the series has been about all these years, Titans, old gods, light and dark. I wanted to feel like the anniversary was capturing, you know, like this kind of mix of all of the core flavors um, and ultimately proofing out that there has been this storyline all the way through, that everything kind of converges nice. into this crescendo. There's been a crescendo. reason um, for it all. And in a very real way, um, how the war within was shaping up, they're like, yeah, dude, like there's, there's no way on earth, right? That, you know, that's gonna divert the course of Mighty Rivers. There's no way to get that done on top of what we're already in production on. So that begat this idea of, of a, a larger saga. I'm like, okay, well, what if we can get there in X number of steps? You know, what if we can build to something just ridiculous, you know, but it might take a couple expansions to do. And somehow, um, folks you know bought in on it like whoa that's you know that's wild let's let's go and so um Taryn Gregory and I Taryn's are you know you know principal story developers so we're we work together every day and you know we talk a lot about like we want to involve all these epic characters but like when they're in the scene they eat all the oxygen and they could just go off and solve for x so it's it's this balance between including all these mega characters and then finding clever ways to get them out of the way, you know, so that the player has maximum agency and the newer characters we're introducing have space True. to breathe and live. So I, I'd, uh, there's always been that feeling that, you know, why didn't Jaina just show up and finish this fight? You know, she has literally an arcane pirate ship and stuff like that. Um, but there there is a balance between making a human, making the player feel like a, a hero, but at the same time, I've never wanted to feel that there's, there's that always been that vanilla thing about vanilla. Wow. That, um, you felt like just like a farmer who's picked up a staff and started an adventure, you know, and that was amazing. That was always really nice. It felt more unique and authentic and, and real, almost like you're putting the fellowship together and going off, you know, Lord of the Rings style. And then we became like champion and everything. And that started to, to evolve into like, okay, each player is now the most powerful. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. They, they, everyone achieved the status of champion, and now we were the most, you know, highest, greatest players around, and it, we can do anything. Each player is a big hero, and I kind of wish we'd take a little bit of a step back and go back to the days of, okay, we're all strong, we're all powerful, we have all been through a lot, but at the end of the day, no single person's gonna be able to do shit. We all got to get together, including the big boys in the game, and actually be able to actually be able to defeat these threats that are coming. Sounds like it was almost an advantage to come to a, something that had already been started. If you'd come to the end of Dragonflight and started from there, that's a little big, it's a bigger buy. It's like, well, wait a minute, where are we going now? We've been flying, okay, well, what does that mean? What do yeah. we do? And instead, you were presented with some beginnings and then you got to decide where those beginnings took you. And, and vector it a little bit, you know, yeah. the, the trick to, uh, after all these years, you have creative direction, which I, it, even today, I don't know that I could do a thesis on right creative right. direction is as unique as the person doing it and the and the chemistry of the team that you're working with but kind of finding that balance again of having strong ideas and kind of saying like i, I want to go this way right but the you know the team had already been you know kind of constructing this thing so it's a mix of maximizing kind of the things that they are most passionate about the ideas that they're kind of dug in on and finding sure. a way to bend everything towards a, a singular purpose. It's a lot. Boosting their sense of ownership. So when you got up on stage at BlizzCon, uh, it was pretty magical for players. I, uh, I, I can say that for myself and a lot of people that I know um, and a lot of fans of the game saw this as a, a return to something. And I think we're coming off an excellent expansion in Dragonflight. But you got up and did something that surprised everybody, which was we're not doing the normal here comes the next expansion here are the features here's the storyline in a yeah. basic way triple expansion to do reveal a trilogy of essentially games um you spoke a lot about bringing uh, you know tying up some loose ends but also creating a saga that is three parts night. at least metal inferno thank you for the sub man thank you for the prime death knight of our scourge appreciate that uh and setting up really the next 20 years of the game perhaps that's very different than what any of you have done up to this point. Mm -hmm. Did that present unique challenges to the way you wanted to create story, the way you wanted your characters to progress, these sorts of things? Yeah, it created all sorts of complexities. Um, 
you know, I, I, under the hood a little bit. It's it, interesting in how when I came back on the team, the development process and even the conceptualizing process, you know, like like where does the expansion take place? What's the what are the main themes? What's the focus? Um, really had become much more democratized, right? Um, and people were, you know, had kind of found their voice in the balance of all the special teams that comprise the World of Warcraft team. Um, you know, they had really built the vision of Dragonflight together. Um, so as I came back in, woohoo! And, you know, the, the, there were folks going like, oh, wow, how is this going to change our dynamic? You know, in terms of, you know, being a creative director. Like, will we I still... mean, really, really, after Shadowlands, they were worried about how is it going to change the dynamic. Shit, I would have looked at Chris Metzen if I was working there. I would have been like, oh, God, save us. Save us. Have you seen what's happened? Have you seen what we've done to Arthas Menethil? Please, please come course correct this shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anybody saw Chris Metzen walking in, except maybe uh, what's his name, the guy who was writing the stories back when before Chris, and now he's gone. Maybe he fucking shit his pants. But uh, everybody else probably thought, "Oh shit, yeah, yeah." Jailer was the goat. My God, the most untrue statement ever said in the chat. We'll have a voice. <laughs> Will we still, you know? I think people were happy um, for the most part. Have stakes in 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 how this all shapes out. So. Like I was saying earlier, kind of learning What's that up, metal? again and learning that balance again and, Welcome, and coming man. in as creative director and be like, no, you know, I'm not here to be, you know, hyper prescriptive um, with everything um, as I might have been as a, as a younger dude. But like really listening for the team's instincts, like what, what are they responding to? What do they want to build? What do the artists want to make? What are they imagining in terms of that pure vision? So on top of that, the complexity of, um, I mean, we're... I don't think this gives up the ghost on anything. Like, we're building three of these at a time. This is, yeah, I'll say it. It's, it's insane. It's it? insane, yeah. right? Um, on top of the team, uh, you know, crazy. over a year ago, having committed to, like, an eight-week cadence. Yeah. So these folks are, we, we are moving so fast, you know? And so the, the difference here is, you know, guys like Taryn and I have to map out where we're going, like, way ahead of the caravan. I will say I'm worried about one thing, specifically one thing, and that's they're moving so fast that these patches are coming out and breaking servers for an entire day. It's been a problem lately. I mean, the pre-patch came out, Warbands patch came out. Things have been broken. Uh, so I'm hoping that they kind of find a way to drop patches without literally, um, you know, causing the game to be unplayable for an entire day. Hopefully they'll get ahead of that and start to learn how to actually do it. Which is its own really interesting <laughs> kind of work, you, right? You know, checking in with everybody. Does this feel cool? Everybody hip, you know? Um, I want to make sure that we're building things that, you know, not only, again, my, my instinct feels are cool and fun, but that the team is proud to build and that they feel they have a voice in and, you know, can express themselves through where the story's going, what the ideas are. We're already mapping out, you know, you know whatever, you know, 13.1 and 13.2 and how they, how they actually play out and connect. And um, it's wild. But in a way, you get to step back and see a far more cohesive vision and, a, you know, far more... Um, refined idea over time so sure. and yeah. without you know again Makes without sense. you know spilling any beans it's like you know we're already honestly we're already talking about you know th the next What's few the next? you know post you know uh, uh, upwards of like 17 yeah. and it's just whoa 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 17 so he's doing three at a time hold on we got to do some math 17 17 expansions is that what he's talking about whoa whoa 5.6. I'm dividing by three in terms of like uh, sagas. If there's if there's sagas, I mean, it'd be close to like six sagas. He's talking about if you're doing them in packs of three, like they just did this. Seventeen. What the shit? We talk about no wow too. This game's just gonna continue on forever. I'll, I'll pass this down to my son one day. It's just keeping the the conveyor belt going. You know, you know, it's like we're loud and clear. I know, thought it was patch seventeen. Maybe content, maybe he's talking about you know, seventeen more regularly. So. Right. Um, in a way, just staying ahead of that curve and making sure that everything, again, is of purpose and telling this much longer <laughs> story, it's been a blast. You know, the, the creative, the pure creative on Warcraft, you know, for the past year and a half has been, how would I put it? Oh, may maybe he meant the next 20 years, 17, so, you know, the next three years and the next 17 after that, so the next 20 years, maybe. Maybe that's what he's talking about. I don't know. 17 expansions sounds pretty damn wild. Such a long span of time. I want to say it's one of the most nuclear creative phases I've seen for Warcraft. But the pace is wild, yeah. right? Like, the pace is wild. And it, it's like, I'm, I ain't 30 anymore, so we joke around all the time, like, oh, you know, 
we need to start instituting, you know, company naps in the middle Hatch of the afternoon. 17, that makes more uh, sense. For the old folks. But 17.0 is, makes more sense. It has been pretty amazing. So that's a great yeah. way of uh, thinking about it. Speaking of personal connections to characters and story, somebody close to you. Wait, aren't we in 11 right now? We're in 11 right now, right? Or 11 is going to be the war within. So 17, that would still be a lot. Shit. That's still far out, man. They're still talking years and years out who I think is a very wise human, once said online somewhere that Chris is Anduin in some ways, kind of worn out, beaten up by <laughs> a straight <laughs> period of like nonstop work. Right? But also on the other end of it, he's a little bit, he's a little bit back to being thrall again. And those two characters represent these two parts of who this person is. How much of these characters moving forward or even in the past have represented you where you were in your life. Like uh, some people say, well, the, er the early versions of these characters are so much, they were so metal. Like even Torrent Chieftains, they look like, <laughs> you know, these metal yeah. dudes and everything. Yeah, yeah, and now big hairy they're, men. They're aging, right? They're maturing. They're moving on in the world. Like you are, like everyone who's worked on this does. Like that's time. Do you think that's a fair thing to say that we'll see these characters change and evolve in the same way that maybe you have and 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 they're kind of your avatars yeah no i know where you're going so there's kind of an a and a b there like the the b which is easier is certainly we want to push these characters forward we want to show some aging we are currently doing that but yeah we we talk about that a lot there are many new characters over the arc of the of the saga that um we don't want to be just one off we want them to be you know pals and um you know working together to you know solve these big problems um, but certainly the the characters that have been around a while we're we're trying to kind of find a way to like capture that age up not necessarily age out but like okay so in that cinematic at blizzcon you know um they went in and put like gray streaks in thrall's yeah. hair i'm like oh it looked great it was it got me it's yeah. like whoa yeah, yeah. and just and when you're know, staring you down it's like our our little boys all grows yeah. up you know it's it's you feel for him. You're supposed to feel for him, right? Which was the point. Yeah. But just the idea that these characters are moving through their own continuum um, and progressing and moving through stuff, like, what a trip, you know, looking back from, from where we started um, you know, to the point where these are you know, fairly fully realized characters um, within this setting. And it's just incredibly satisfying that way to, to see that progression. Um, and certainly us as storytellers, as people, you know, as, as we, you know, it's not necessarily... It is certainly getting older, but it's also just experience over time. You know, li big life moments, becoming parents, you know, become, you know sure. finding love, finding your career, all these big kind of life, you know, hurdles. Yeah. It's like, you know, I tell folks all the time, like, don't be afraid to pour yourself into this stuff. You know, of even course. You uh, he's right, though. I mean, at the end of the day, when you're writing a character or writing anything, you're writing about your own experiences. You can't really get into depth about certain things or character aspects if you haven't experienced it yourself, right? Like a, like a dad is going to be able to write better about a father-son relationship than somebody who's never had a kid. That totally makes sense. So I don't fault Menson for putting him himself into the characters because that just creates a... He has a deep understanding of what he's gone through, and when he puts Thrall through it, he can write better. You know, He can write about it on a deeper level because he's been through it himself. And I think that that's a completely normal way to, to write or to, you know, to handle a story. And you're like, oh, God, will the people down the hall dig it? You know, will, will I be judged? Like, yes, probably. But the answer is you're an artist. Go get it, right? Find your truth. Because often when, you know, we're pulling from a place of, like, deeply personal experience, someone's going to feel that on the other end, on the other end of the line, you know, as you're playing the game. It's like some of those themes that really matter. Whether, whether you're a writer, quest designer, narrative folks, cinematics, you know, like the, the game design, you know, like everyone kind of pours themselves into their, into their craft. And the more genuine that is, and I, I think sometimes the more risk you take, I think you get more genuinely affecting content. I think people feel that, they feel you in it one way or another. There are many themes embedded in the World Soul Saga evidenced by different characters. That are, that are very pointedly things that I think today or I'm struggling with today, um, for sure. But again, I think about it in terms of like, as, as the team's you know, creative leader, um, that's not the job as much. I, I, going through the daily motions, totally. I mean, when I'm having a bad day at work, you know, first thing I do is pick up my, pick up my sword and start screaming that I, I have no light. Yeah, I worry that if I call upon the light, it won't answer.
That's how I feel. That's what I start saying. Yeah, I go full into it. I get all emotional. Often, I think the job is like trying to learn to call them out, you know, and challenge them to kind of breed their own experience into it, um, as opposed to pouring my own in. Um, so it's it's a balance. I assume that's what. Over time, you have a character. Let's we'll stick with Thrall for a minute. He's, you know, probably the most well-known of the Chris Metz, and certainly you voice him. So until they find somebody that, better, until they find yeah. somebody better, uh, maybe you'll age out of it. I don't know. <laughs> We're getting there. Um, but no, Old uh, man that Thrall. you've breathed enough life into that character and given them enough direction over so much time that I that I have to think, in a lot of cases, they start to run on their own gas and. Well, I'm not asking you to tell me if there's any tragedy coming at all. We're not even suggesting it here. I, I have a I have a kill list. Do you? I've got like my, my top twelve <laughs> characters. Shit. Like they're me. all going. Why is Cadgar at the top of the list? <laughs> oh I shit! Can't. I love Cadgar. There's no there's no uh, kill list. All right, good. Oh, shit. But you know what I mean. You you might find yourself going well. Is Cadgar gonna it might die? Be time for character X to take a character dive. We, we it's, you know, so there's no, I'm kidding, there's no kill list um, necessarily. Uh, but we do talk about this stuff all the time. And the only, you know, when you start talking about knocking off main characters, it's not a small thing. And, and usually that is in service to, in the, in the general story you're developing, if you really need to punctuate, you know, you know dramatic stakes, the easiest thing to do is ask, ask Lucas, blow up a planet or, you know, knock kill off a main character. Rent. Yeah, kill Vary and Rin. I mean, that set the stage for Legion. It did make it very serious. And I will say one thing. As shit as Shadowlands was and everything that's come basically since Legion, um, they handled Vary and Rin's death very well. Like, they never kind of made it, you know, they never lessened it. They didn't just be res him, bring him back. Like, that death still, till this day, means a lot. And we caught uh, Varian in a couple times, you know, as Anduin's thinking about him or in the Shadowlands when he put his hand on his shoulder, like, stuff like that. But um, they've never cheapened his death. To this day, the death of Varian Wren, they have the monument and Stormwind and everything. It's, it was a big moment in WoW, and they've done a very good job of preserving that big moment. Tyrion Fordling, for example. But they screwed Arthas. Yeah, that? true. Yeah, I do. That's I true. I do. That. I'm still, still gripping on it. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was rough. Um, <laughs> no pressure, though. I'm just saying it was no, a rough moment. No pressure. You know, so we do, we do talk about it from time to time, but we try and frame it with you know the the greatest gravity possible and trying to be clear that you know this franchise has another 20 years in it you know it's this big ongoing idea and losing critical characters sour fang was a good character so it's you know we talk about it from time to time um i won't tell you we won't lose anybody over the arc of the saga those types of moments are all about establishing stakes and that emotional you know um engagement from the he said i won't say we're not going to lose any we're going to lose somebody Someone's gonna die during this saga. That's a guarantee. From the player, ultimately, so, you know. Does it, does it help <clears throat> populate the World Soul Saga as a creative place to know that over the last few- Vol'jin died, yes. Tyrion's death was absolutely uh, ridiculous, I'll be honest. How did, I don't get how Tyrion went from being like this amazing paladin leading the crusade against the Lich King. He was freaking top tier, S tier paladin. Like he was what every paladin aspired to be. And then he died to, like, that boss, like, that random boss from uh, the Suramar raid. In the opening of Legion, like, we're just... Uh, he needed a cinematic, like, a big cutscene or something. How are we just going to kill Tyrion like that? Uh, that that one still bothers me to this day, I'm not going to lie. I think Tyrion deserved better. Years While you were gone, for much of it, the team has, has made a real effort or a priority out of having allied races discovered in the world that players can not only unlock, but then be and might prefer over the originals or whatever, like this additional diversity for choice seems like a really potent way to, to fill your world with more interesting characterization rather than just, well, it's orcs and humans and a few others. Yeah, I, I, I love it. You know, just, just old school D&D &D and you know, all these options on, you know, player expression, what kind of, you know, what, what, what culture you want to be from. I love that kind of stuff. So opening that up, especially like, you know, Battle for Azeroth and, you know, the, the inclusion of all these new silhouettes and flavors or whatever I thought was awesome, actually. And even the ones I didn't think I would play, um, I wound up, you know, I rolled a Volpera yeah. uh, Hunter. Oh, and then shit. I, I consistently... He's playing Volpera? Oh no, Chris Metzen. Why, Chrissy? Why? Chrissy, wake up. Don't do this. They dress him like Robin Hood from the old <laughs> Disney movie. So it's like, I, I actually really dig a lot of the flavors that have been added over time. Like, it's, it's, in my opinion, 
the water's warm, everybody in the water pool, bus. you know, I think wow can stretch and um, grow to, you know, encapsulate all of these flavors. I think giving you know, players more options, more visual options is awesome. At the end of the day, I think, you know, erring on the side of, you know, player choice, player agency is, is, is the right move, like why you're playing this game in the first place, right? When you imprint, especially when it's your character, when you imprint on a, on a look or a vibe or, you know, like a, like a vision that you're, that you connect with, it's like, go, yeah. get it. So let's bring it full circle to what is imminent, which is the war within. Players have a lot of expectations. Uh, some of it is based on just excitement because there is a three-part saga coming. They're not yeah. used to that. There's a whole new structure to this. Yeah. So what would you say to players who are pins and needles about this next expansion, the start of the big grand story? As we were talking about earlier, we've never been in a situation where we've shaped the whole giddy up, you know, all at once. So there's the adventure component of the War Within, and then there's right. the max level campaign, and there's the, you know, the, the subsequent patches, and it's all been designed and the story thread to kind of play out over time. You have narrative threads and sinews kind of you yeah. know, linking everything together. It's, I, personally, a little biased, but I, I think it's off the hook, right? Um, at the end of the day, I, hope so. I would want people to remember it is still only, however, part one of a, of a much, you know, a much larger narrative. Um, and I would want people to look at it that way. You know, it's it's meant to rise and you know crescendo with its own max level campaign. Yeah, we I hope he's not saying that the War Within is gonna be shit. Then you know, like it's eh, there's not much gonna happen in this expansion. You gotta wait till the next one to see what happens. I'm sure there's gonna be a cliffhanger in the War Within, and obviously the story thread is not gonna close there. It has to continue. But I do hope we have some big moments in the War Within. You know, it's not just treated as a first movie in a in a trilogy, and it's treated more like a. Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, a movie within itself. You know, it's got, it should have its own rise towards the end. We'll see. We'll see how yeah, Will I be expected to walk in Quest it's 1 the first and time we do the this. sword from the planet? Oh, interesting. That's an interesting one. Uh, I would say to that, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, actually, the sword, the resolution of the sword um, that we started with at BlizzCon, um, actually, that's a 13 thing. Um, we're going to build to that. Um, and it's a, oh, it's a doozy. Um, One does not simply yank a sword from Azeroth. I would even say you are not prepared for that moment. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Illidan confirmed. Is that what he just did? Yeah, he, he just literally just, he just gave us a you are not prepared. He's literally confirming Illidan's return. Oh, my God. That's actually, <laughs> that's actually pretty cool. Oh my god, if the hype wasn't real, sure is now. Shit, Illy Boy's coming back. Oh, damn. Uh, yeah, expansions are going to drop quicker now. I mean, they didn't, I don't think they said once a year, but certainly more the quicker than every two years. Oh my god. He's going to have something to do with it. What a... And leave it at that. But it is yeah, a Chris 13 Metzen. issue. Ultimately, is you know, things us. like, 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 like Zalatath. I think we've been doing a lot of work to kind of build her up um, as a very different kind of villain. Um, she is not like a Deathwing type, you know, villain where, you know, just you, he's flying and burning everything and like, oh, crap, you know, we're going to, you know, like, clearly he's where the storyline ends. She's <laughs> was it me? It was Chris Metzen. I didn't in such a way that, like, we're going to be confronted by her and face her multiple times over the arc of the saga. Um, so it's not it's not going to be this, you know, one and done type like, oh, you know, she's the, you know, she's the raid boss. Um, you know, she's meant to, you know, kind of weave in and out of events over time. Mm. Uh, so that's something I would say. But definitely the sword thing sticks in my head. You know, like certain of these themes are, are built to play out over time. Um, so I hope people are into that. I hope they're into, you know, a, a longer form engagement. Because in a way, you know, so many of our expectations kind of, you know, crystallize around like, well, wait a minute, I didn't get the, the, the full meal I was expecting in 11.0. It's, it's not built to be that. It's built to be part one. So buckle up, you know, the, the ride will be, I hope, insane and insanely fulfilling. Going back to that, that promise of the, the 20th anniversary of World of Warcraft, like, I'm I want excited, this man. saga to feel like it is just the perfect crescendo of 20 years of storytelling. Chrissy yeah, got me we, excited. We said it, but it's gone. Yeah, there, there is a sense that we are fulfilling something. Uh, the, the 20 years came and, and, and will end this November. I guess November's launch, right? Hello. Yeah, 20 year anniversary will be this November. Yeah. And there is a feeling, I can tell you from the player side, of really coming to something special. 
And I know that puts pressure on the team when, when players oh, collectively there's have an idea that they think should happen. And then the team's like, well, we're kind of going a different way. But I don't know that I've felt this much positive feedback in a long time about just where things are headed. And nobody says that about a 20-year-old property, usually. Usually there, we're like, There's eh, not a lot of precedent talk. we have, right? Like, that, that's good. the same contiguous project. There's plenty of game, you know, yeah. game series run for 20 years, no question. Yeah. But, like, GTA. it is honestly a blessing, a and a, you know, often um, sometimes a hindrance, just trying to, you know, sift through the sheer volume of all of these details. Uh, poor Sean Copeland, right? You know, just trying to keep it all, you know, make it all make sense. Um, but it is also its its principal strength, you know, particularly because it's an MMO and a video game, because you've lived these moments. You didn't just passively watch. You didn't just, you know, yeah, read a book I or was watch there. a movie. Um, you've lived these moments, and they matter, and there are stakes, you know. So as complex as it is to try and push the world forward without breaking everything that came before, which is its own kind of challenge, it's a very noble challenge, right? Um, it's a privilege to <laughs> tread water in this complexity of this setting. After all of these years, it's amazing that it's still the same stakes. It's still the same world that you've always Well, known. there's a future I see where you're, you know, reclining in some sort of chair. With the blanket over my blanket knees. Blanket over your knees, fire. keeping you warm, and you're looking back, and you're thinking... Telling kids to stay wow. off my lawn. I yeah, know, exactly. And they're all in their haptic suits playing whatever version of WoW they have. And, <laughs> and wow, looking VR. back at Grandpa's accomplishments, and I think it looks like something to be pretty proud of already. Well, I, for one, could not be more excited about this next expansion and the oh, entirety shit. of the world at Soul Saga. And I think you and your team should be proud, and I wish you guys nothing but luck in the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks so much, Scott. It was good fun. <laughs> that was hard going. Never get that. <laughs> like they had to do the fake hit there. Like shit. production was like, you guys got to shake hands at the end of the interview, and it just got weird. Yeah, that was good, man. Great. I mean, Chrissy boy coming back. How could you not love it? Metzen is the hero of WoW. He will be the savior of WoW, or he will just be there for the end of WoW. We'll have to wait and see as we continue forward. But uh, man, I'm excited for for what's to come. That's for sure.